I've always been on this like, like really crazy healing journey. Ever since I was 20, I was diagnosed with like several spinal diseases, seven actually. And when I was 21, I was told I had the spine of an 80 year old woman. And I had a doctor who said to me, you know, by the time you're in your mid thirties, you're going to be in a wheelchair. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I do not want that. And so I began looking for lots of uh, what I would call complementary ways to to work with my medical doctors, but doing as much as I can to ensure that my spine didn't totally collapse, basically. And so I had to to find a lot of of answers that, you know, were obviously working with with my Western medical doctors, uh, orthopedic doctors, neurosurgeons, the whole thing, but but to find answers for how I could live uh, an active life. Welcome to Linda's Corner, where we bring more hope, healing, and happiness to the world. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about transitioning from suffering to thriving. I'm delighted to welcome Kathy Harmon Luber. Kathy is a healing navigator, humanitarian, and the author of the best-selling book, From Surviving to Thriving. She has appeared on CNN, the New York Times, LA Times, the Washington Post, and more. You can reach Kathy at her website, sufferingtothriving.com. And I'll include a link in the show notes. Welcome, Kathy. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Hi, Linda. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. And I am so interested to hear your story and your experiences with suffering and that transition to thriving. And, and before we started recording here, I asked the question, because you are a marine biologist and you're also a publisher in graduate studies. And so that is very different from what you're doing now. And I'm assuming that that has something to do with your story. So let's, I would love to hear that. It does indeed. Yeah, I, I majored in marine biology out of a real love for the environment. And, and when I was in Washington, D.C., I was working for a lot of uh, nonprofit advocacy organizations, including environmental organizations. And so that has always been a first love of mine. I'm a real nature girl. And I, I happened to uh, work at George Washington University and, and in their publishing education program and got really interested in that because I'd always been a writer uh, ever since I was a little girl, you know, with journals and stuff. And then I began writing articles and things. And so those two things kind of started going together. But, but I took off in the direction of, of nonprofit advocacy and fundraising in particular because you know, that that's kind of what makes things go. You you need to be able to raise funds to, to to make a difference in the world. And so that's been my career. And I've always been on this like, like really crazy healing journey. Ever since I was 20, I was diagnosed with like several spinal diseases, seven actually. And when I was 21, I was told I had the spine of an 80 year old woman. And I had a doctor who said to me, you know, by the time you're in your mid thirties, you're going to be in a wheelchair. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I do not want that. And so I began looking for lots of uh, what I would call complementary ways to, to work with my medical doctors, but doing as much as I can to ensure that my spine didn't totally collapse basically. So I was doing really, really well. Um, and then uh, maybe 20 years ago, I began having discs rupture. And because of all of the spinal issues, it made them inoperable. Like for a lot of people, you, you rupture a disc and if it needs to be operated on, you just have it operated on and you're kind of back to normal. That wasn't my case. And so I had to, to find a lot of, of answers that, that um, you know, were obviously working with, with my Western medical doctors uh, orthopedic doctors, neurosurgeons, the whole thing, but but to find answers for how I could live uh, an active life. And I have to say, you know, probably the marine biology tipped it off, but I was an avid swimmer and um, I love to hike and be in nature all the time. I was super active. I love to dance and just uh, go to the gym all around really super um, active, basically. And when the discs started rupturing, the first one ruptured, I was actually at the gym with a personal trainer who knew about my back issue. So, so that was the first big surprise was like, how did that happen? And then in, I, but I was, but I was, I was 
managing. That's the thing. I just kept recovering. You know, it takes maybe three, four months to recover from a disc rupture, but then I would be okay again. And I'd gradually get back to my life until December of 2016, not that long ago. I had a really severe, the most severe of all of the ruptures, and it left me bedridden for five years. Like not a little bedridden. Like, okay, so the first three months go by and I keep thinking, okay, any day now I'm going to be feeling better, but I wasn't. I couldn't walk to the bedroom door. It was, it was really disastrous. And, you know, again, neurosurgeons, some of the top in the country said it would be a 14 to 18 hour surgery and we won't do it because it's so risky. You might be worse off than what you are now. Do all the stuff you've been doing by way of um, rest and physical therapy, acupuncture. Uh, I, I then started turning to things I've been really interested in for anxiety, stress relief, and and depression, things like sound healing, energy healing. And I decided, you know what? Those have worked so well for me in the past, and they just make me feel really good. I'm going to start spending more time doing that. And so I did. I began to do that. And it's one of those things you can do when you're flat out on your back in bed, right? There was not much I could do. I could do some grant writing for the nonprofits I work with. I started keeping a journal. I've always been a journaler, but I started looking for quotes that were inspiring. I started writing about what I was going through and what I thought it meant. And like, what? I asked all the wrong questions, of course. Why is this happening to me? What Mm. if it's, what if I never recover from this? Like some of the doctors said, you might not, this might be it. And I was like, oh my God, how could that possibly be? Right. I was still young. It's like, why, why is this happening? So you go, your mind goes to that terrible place of like, what if this never gets better? What if I'm a burden to everyone? What if my husband and friends leave me? You know, you, you go to that terrible place in your mind. It's very depressing. And um, I have suffered from depression and anxiety. So I immediately started getting help. And that was amazing. But what I started noticing in the contemplative writing that I was doing is in every moment, And I was also reading a lot of great people, Wayne Dyer and uh, Joe Dispenza, uh, Deepak Chopra, you know, Louise Hay, just all of them and and gleaning from their work, bits of wisdom. I put their quotes in my journal and I looked to them when I was in a really, really down, terrible place. And I would say, okay, what do I need today to to, to get through this day and keep myself in a good place? And I realized that's a choice moment. Like everything in life is a choice. You can choose to suffer. And I could see myself, you know, old one day and very bitter and angry if I kept going in that direction. But then I thought to myself, but thriving is a choice. Joy is a choice, right? And I love um, Pema Chodron, who's a, a, a Buddhist nun, She writes some very plain speaking, beautiful books that are so good about navigating really rough times. And I always remember her saying, you know, every moment you choose love or you choose fear by choosing the wrong questions, you know, what's going to happen to me and just going in that downward spiral, you're, you're not, you're, you're choosing fear. You're not choosing love. Love is what can I do today that my future self will be grateful for, or that will help me? What do I need to do today that will help me feel better later on today or tomorrow or the next day? And so I began kind of realizing this this concept. It's not an original concept, but your mind is your medicine, right? And so there's a way of, of, of helping ourselves retrain our minds. And I've always been I mean, for many, many years, I've been, I've been, uh, 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 yoga and meditation into that. And, and so that kind of laid the foundation for, for building on all of this. But, but I would, I would start my day off with these positive quotes. I'd, I'd, I'd begin to, to just look at my life in the, in, within the question of what if something wonderful is going to happen tomorrow? What if right now this healing journey that I'm going through, right now 
what if it's a portal to a better, different, um, more exciting life? You know, what if the suffering part of it can be managed by not suffering in my mind and I can get to a place of thriving? And spoiler alert, I did. You know, I mean, this really, it really does work to be able to, and my book, Suffering to Thriving, really is a, a toolkit of like 38 very short chapters. And each one is a tool for helping to get from that point of suffering. And when I say suffering, it doesn't have to be a healing issue. It could be a mental health issue. It could be an emotional issue. It could be a divorce or breakup or loss or grief. We can suffer through lots of things in life. But the thing is, we can choose to get on a path to thrive. Yeah. So that's in a nutshell, that's the story. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh my goodness, Kathy, this is incredible. So I, I'm just trying to catch up with all of the, the twists and turns from this, from the beginning to where you are now. And there's so many different facets. And I'm trying in my mind also to make the connection between where you started and where you're coming and where you are now. And from the, the marine biology, I see someone who loves nature someone who is a scientist who who is into research and and what can I study and what can I learn and how can I do this and then you took that original thing into a desire for humanitarian work and how how can I help to make the world a better place and so those kinds of things were in there from the very beginning and then with your publishing it gave you the the keys and the tools that you needed not only to help other people by writing these um the grant requests but also through your creating your own story and how to put that out there. So that is just really quite beautiful because those are not things that when I first heard it, I thought, wait a minute, point A to point B does not seem logical. And now I see that's really cool. Yeah. And then as you went through your personal experience and that it was through some health issues with your spine and being told that you basically have no hope you are you you have a, a a young desire and an old body that's that's not going to support your desires and you just kept going it's like well i'm doing this and i'm recovering a little bit and then you just keep doing the same thing i'm hurting ah uh, but i'm going to be okay and doing it a little bit and this process and cycle kept going until you got to a point where it didn't take just a little while to be able to recover and I thought it was fascinating. I even a little wrote a little note down here about asking the wrong questions. Yeah. So I know you mentioned some wrong questions. And to me, that immediately makes me wonder, well, then what is a right question? And you mentioned a few of, you know, what if today is wonderful versus why did this happen to me? Fascinating. The questions that we ask. And then what if I got better? What if? This is my portal to something better. Oh my goodness. If everybody asked that question who was suffering, and I do appreciate that you said suffering is much broader than physical oh, yeah. pain. We have mental and emotional and social and physical suffering where all of these things hurt. And to be able to be in that place of hurting and then to be able to spiral up Oh, I would love to hear some of these tools. Can we hear a couple of them? Absolutely. And thank you. You wove that, the thread through the whole like trajectory of, of my life, actually, so beautifully. Yeah, that is exactly what it is. You know, it is about, I think, not losing hope, finding, finding. Okay, so when I when I was deep in this and beginning to get a handle on on my my outlook, my perspective of all this. Wayne Dyer has a wonderful quote, you know, when you begin to look at things differently, the things you look at will change. And they do, and they really do. I, I think I didn't get that exactly right, but you get the idea. And that is the truth. There came a moment when I started to really think of this as, okay, my healing journey is embedded in my life's journey, which is embedded in my soul's journey. So instead of asking all the wrong what ifs, what if I start just questioning, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Why am I going through this? Who am I now? I know who I was then. 
I know who I was through my whole life. Who am I now that I can't do any of those things? My life as I knew it was over. I couldn't do any of the things for, for many years. And so then what? You know, who am I now? And that's where I started leaning into things like the sound healing, the Reiki energy work, um, all of those things. But 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 some of the tools are really as easy as asking the right question and saying to yourself, all right, we live on this planet at a tremendously challenging time. Not the most challenging, maybe, but maybe it is. Um, there's a lot going on for everyone all over the world. And, and so we are not here by accident. Everybody is here for a reason. Every person, every listener, every person around the world, we have a purpose. There's a reason we're here. And I think the most important thing to life is to figure out what is my purpose? I thought I knew. I thought I knew what my purpose was and my gifts. You know, yeah, working at all of these um, service-related, humanitarian kinds of organizations, that, that was a good purpose. Ah, uh, but wait, something else was in store, you know? And, and now it is this healing journey and helping others to realize that there is a way to connect the dots between suffering and thriving that it's not as hard as you think. You just have to get on the right path and follow some of these tools. And again, you know, what, what are they? Okay, making your mind your medicine, grabbing a hold of the negative spiraling downward thoughts. And I just want to say to all your listeners, if you are in that negative place of depression, get help. Anxiety, get help. That is not a weakness. That is a strength to ask for help. That's first. But if your mind is just ruminating on all of the all of the wrong stuff and you don't see a bright future for yourself, you know, start finding ways. What inspires you? What is your medicine? Nature is my medicine. Music is my medicine. I'm a classically trained flute player. When that disc ruptured, I had to stop performing every weekend. I can't I still can't play my flute the way I used to for as long as I used to. I have other things now. I have lots of you know, crystal bowls, Tibetan bowls, drums, Native American flutes, a gong, beautiful instruments that 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 scientific researchers combined with medical researchers are telling us are healing for the body. That's why sound healing is in so many hospitals and and rehabilitation places and nursing homes all over the country and also all over Europe and other parts of the world. And so, you know, finding something that is your medicine. It's different for everyone. Each one of us is unique. Like I was saying, each one of us is here for the reason, uh, a reason. We each have a purpose. We each have gifts. I think what this massive disruption was in my life was an opportunity to hit the reset button and say, okay, you've got all the time in the world right now to really contemplate what are your gifts, take inventory, what can you bring to the world? And at some point, you know, that journal became my book. And I thought I have to share it with people because it isn't only for people in pain or who have back issues. It's for any kind of life disruption, frankly. And life disruptions can be anything. Losing a job is a life disruption, right? But they give us the opportunity to stop. COVID was a massive life disruption for the whole planet. You know, why do things the same old way we've been doing and we get we're humans we get stuck in this rut we do things the same old way well a great question linda is why am i doing things this way maybe there's another way what brings me joy that's a great question what makes me happy what how do i like to be of service to people like i love playing um sound healing baths they're called sound baths you know immersions in sound i love doing energy therapy i've always loved that but now it is a much bigger part of my life than it was before that that last spinal disc rupture. So, so I see it not as a terrible thing, although it's so hard when we're when these things happen to us, when we're in it, whether it's a short thing or or a, a much prolonged thing, it's hard to look at it and say, ah, wait, I know there's a gift here someplace. I know I'm going to be grateful for this. No, we don't do that. It took me a long time to get to the place where I could be. And trust me, I had a 
for decades, a really robust gratitude practice. When this happened to me, I was, I was not doing the gratitude thing. I had to get back into it gradually and say, okay, what am I grateful for? Okay. I'm grateful for my husband, for my friends. I'm grateful it wasn't worse than it was. I'm grateful that I'm making little incremental baby step progress. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm grateful that, that I have other interests to occupy my mind. So I'm not in that terrible negative place all the time. So it takes time, but, but gratitude is one of the tools in the toolkit. Taking inventory is, you know, okay, look, for, for, for three months, I, I, I moped. I was, I was cranky. I was snarky, the whole thing. You know, I was not a happy camper. I was in tremendous pain and I did not see a way out of this when the previous times by then I saw the way out. Right. And so I was not in a good place. And I decided one day I, I, I was kind of in my, in my mind, making a list of all the things I couldn't do up until the day this happened. I was hiking going on long walks with friends. I was swimming, you know, three to five hours a week. I was doing, uh, playing, playing my classical flute with my, with my music partner twice a week, once or twice a week. I was on boards of nonprofit organizations in our community. I mean, the list was huge. And I was just having a little pity party for myself. And then I don't know, this bolt of inspiration came into my head. All right, you felt sorry for yourself long enough. What can you do? And I start thinking about it. You know, it's like, okay, I can't play my instruments, but I can play music. I can find it on my laptop and I can, I can play something that's uplifting. I can't stand at my easel. I'm a, I'm a, photo a fine art photographer and, and, and painter as well. It's like, I can't stand at my easel. I can't pick up my camera. I asked my husband to go to my studio and fetch my, my sketchbook. I just started sketching. Um, I started writing more poetry. You know, I just, I just kept on finding things. I couldn't ride horses anymore. I started sketching horses. Okay. It's not the same. I get it. You know, and I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's not like it made me feel all better, but I wasn't just sitting there feeling sorry for myself and going down that, 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 that spiral of, of negativity. Right. And so in any disruptive situation, take inventory. What can you do? You know, what, what fills you up? What, what makes you on fire? Where is your passion? Where is your bliss? Start asking those questions because like I said earlier, your healing journey is part of your life's journey for sure. And that is a portal, portal to your soul's journey what you are here on this earth to do, um, what the gifts you have are to share. So many people have gifts and they're not their corporate job, right? They're, they're something totally different. Look at those things, you know? How can you make that more of your life? How can you make it more of your purpose? Is there something there you can offer to the world that uplifts other people or that is of service to other people or the planet? And that's the other thing. You know, people say, oh, you know, it's all gloom and doom. This, this planet of ours, you know, it's, it's just nothing. It's going to make things better. It's a, it's a downward spiral in and of itself. But little things that we can do, plant a garden, you know, do, do plant trees, give a donation to an organization that plants trees, uh, hum to the birds and trees when you're out in nature, spend more time in nature clean up trash on the beach. There are zillions of things. And there are so many nonprofit organizations out there that have lists and lists of what people can do to make a small difference. But if we all made that little act of kindness or service to the planet, things do improve a bit. Does it stop climate change? Probably not, but it helps in other ways. And so a lot of people right now, I think, have this sense that a lot of my clients have, have said at one point, you know, I just feel like everything's so futile. It's not. If you can touch one life. And when I was writing my book, I took that journal. I started writing my book. This was a couple of years in, you know, I was bedridden, you know, this is, I'm going on like year three, I think. And I, I thought, I think there's something here for other people. I'm just going to start writing. And if it helps one person. 
that's good enough for me. And it's been much bigger than that. And I'm thrilled about that. But I think when we start thinking about, you know, what can we do to be of service to the to the world? It doesn't have to affect zillions of people. You don't need to be an influencer, you know, on social media. Do do something that affects your community. And it makes us feel so good. It makes us feel so much joy to be able to help. It's, I'm looking at your, your podcast, you know. What you do brings people so much hope and inspiration and joy, right? And it feels good to be able to get those messages out there, I'm sure. And it yeah. feels good. I love how you have twisted this just a little bit and given it a turn where we're not just talking about our personal experience, this, this micro little example of me and my suffering, but to look out and say, and the world is suffering. And I love that because so many people look at the world and they feel hopeless. They feel like it's futile. They feel like I can't make a difference. And the interesting, I love how you mentioned it's okay that we don't change everyone, but can we help one person? Can we help one situation. I mean, the other day I helped with a service project of cleaning up garbage by the, on the freeway. I mean, not the most glamorous of things. I'm on the, you know, by the side of the road, trying not to get hit by a car, picking up trash, putting it in orange bags. And, and I looked at it and I thought, this is so cool because I just helped make the world a better place. Yes. And, and it was a small thing, but, but these small and simple things can make a difference. And exactly like your experience of asking the right questions. And I've been listening. You have listed like dozens of right questions, the kinds of things to ask. What can I do to make myself, my home, my environment, my neighborhood, my space to become a a more beautiful, peaceful place to be? And these kinds of questions that we can help ourselves and we can help our world. And it's okay that we don't change everyone's world, the world, we can change our world. Yes. And that is, oh, I love it. Absolutely yes. love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, thank you. I, I I love that you love it because I, I've seen it work in action. And and I think, you know, it, it gets down to what I said earlier that is another of the tools in the toolkit. Every moment is a choice, right? You chose to go out and pick up trash on that highway. And or we could choose to, you know, sit around scrolling our devices or watching television or, you know, whatever. Uh, it, there, there are millions of choices in the world for all of us. But making a choice that, that, that feels good to us and that helps our community, even if it helps your block, your own block, that's a big deal. And, you know, I just, it, it also comes from, Years ago, just, you know, scrolling through my social media and looking at all the arguments and the negativity and saying, yeah, that is not the world I want to live in. I I want something that is more positive and joy joy filled. So I just started sharing all the positive quotes I could find. You know, and I thought if people are scrolling on my page, they're going to see some positivity. And sure enough, people started saying, I really love when you post because it makes me feel good. I'm like, whoa. It wasn't just me who enjoyed that quote. Others enjoy it. And if you help one person to have a smile that day, that's the other thing. We, we and, 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 it, and we don't need to get that feedback necessarily from people. I've heard you know, lots of people say that we don't always know the impact we make on another person's life. Um, I once worked at a at a boarding school for the arts. And, you know, I remember years later, a kid came back to me. I was walking across campus. Nobody else on campus. It's up on a mountain in this beautiful place. And this kid just like looked so low. I said, hi, how's your day going? I'm like, okay, well, I hope you have a better day. Gorgeous day, isn't it? Small talk, just total, total mindless small talk on my part, right? I saw that kid at a jazz festival and he came back to me and he says, you know what? You're not even going to remember this. And I didn't, frankly, he says, but that was the difference between me, me feeling like I was losing hope and going down the road of depression and actually reaching out and getting myself some help. And I've got goosebumps as I say that, because you don't know what would have happened to that kid, right? 
You just never know the impact you have on another person. It may be that one thing that you do, a smile, a kind word, uh, a social media post that's positive, a positive quote, whatever it happens to be, every person has a unique something. And when I say in service to the world, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, give your entire life to a something. It's as easy as, as just that, just like be kind. It's like just as easy as being kind, saying a kind thing, doing a kind gesture, holding a door open, whatever it happens to be, that can change a person's life in a way or change the course of their day, the trajectory of their mood, so to speak. So yeah, in little things. The trajectory, because as we can have an influence by doing positive things, we can also have an influence by doing negative things. And if I'm going to have an influence that I am not aware of, I would really like it to be a positive where I helped make somebody's day better, make things a little brighter rather than my unkind word hurt someone's feelings and put them down a negative spiral or, or something like that, because it can go both ways. So and I love as you're talking about all these choices, these choices, 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 that is empowering. And it's also a little bit frightening because yes. that means I have some accountability and responsibility for my own life. And sometimes people would say, but it's so much easier if I stay in a victim mentality and say life stinks and it's not my fault. And I would say, you know what? Maybe it isn't your fault, but what can we do about it? What are the right questions? So, yeah. And I think that, that, you know, that's a really good point because a lot of people are in that place, you know, and I think there's a lot of talk about trauma. You know, we all have had our trauma in our younger lives. I know I certainly have. And it is the difference, the victim mentality versus not being a victim and being empowered and having agency going ahead in your life sometimes boils down to getting the help that you need to, right? Just to, just to take, to, to be able to look at what happened to you and not, not necessarily say it was okay what that person or people did to me. That's Never. not the issue. It's, it's about saying, yeah, that happened, but you know what? I, I am not going to let that happen to myself again. I am stronger as a result of it. And, and, and getting therapy is just, can be just immensely, it was immensely helpful for me in getting through the traumas of my younger life. And and getting to this place where we can even have this conversation today. I mean, there was a point in my life when I was so traumatized, I didn't have a voice. Mm. I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. I was literally shy, but I literally couldn't speak. I would just shake. I would just shake in school. Yeah. Mm. And it's it's one of those things that my whole life could have been like that, right? But But you get the help that you need as an adult and you, and you work through those issues and I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying it's ever over. It's an onion, you know, layer after layer after layer. Yeah. And is it hard? Yes. Is it thrilling when you begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel? Oh yeah, totally. And a lot of people say, oh, it's just so hard. I've had clients in, in both the sound healing and, and Reiki work say, yeah, just too much has happened. I can't do that. I can't, I can't look at it. It's too painful. And while it is, I call this earth school. We're on earth school. Stuff happens. And, and it, it is always a question of what are you going to do with what's dealt to you? It is that old adage, making lemonade out of lemons, right? Um, the trauma thing is, is really, really difficult and painful. And that is suffering. But is. we are at a place in society today where there's so much discussion about this out there. Everyone is talking about how to heal from your, your trauma. Uh, Dr. Gabor Mate uh, has written, an, I love him. He's written a number of books. Dr. Keisha Ewers, who is a doctor who has solved her own autoimmune issues and the missing pillar that so many people do miss when they've got autoimmune, I've got autoimmune, 
um, is the trauma component. When I really started to dig in yet again, another layer of, of what is there, that's when my autoimmune began to turn around. I was doing a lot of different things, but that was a big part of it. And so for people, you know, who say, oh, it's just too hard. This is hard work. I can't do this. You have a life ahead of you. What do you want that to be? There's the choice point. Maybe you go through a year or two or three of therapy, or maybe you can't afford therapy and you read all the books and listen to all the podcasts about trauma and healing and begin to have some epiphanies on your own. Not all of my epiphanies have been through therapy. A lot of them have been through, you know, reading these, these um, doctors and others and listening to pod, their podcasts and things and, and having that mind of inquiry and maybe in, in, in a, in a session or five or 25, whatever it takes for a particular person. Some people have real epiphanies after only a few sessions. Yes, you have a new life. You have a new life. You have a new lease on life. And suddenly your world is full of unlimited possibilities. Or yeah, sure. You can choose to just really just, you know, be mired okay. in negativity and, and saying, poor me, poor me. Everything keeps happening to me because all this other stuff happened, poor me, or you can do that. And right. people, people do. And people do, and they choose that. And as you're talking about this idea that it is too hard, I believe that you cannot heal without your consent. And we can't heal someone who is not ready and not ready for that buy-in. So having a conversation like we are today, part of that is just to let people know that there is an option. Because when you feel like, well, this is what it is, I'm stuck and there's nothing I can do about it. I, I, I've been there and I know how that feels. And to have this introduction to say, guess what? There is something you can do about it. And the wonderful news is we have options. Yes. You can do this or this or this. And if, and if this particular line is not your cup of tea, that's actually okay because you've got so many other options. And now that you know that there is a way out, it really is a choice because I don't think it's much of a choice if you don't know that there's a way out. So I appreciate you speaking up and helping people recognize that there is a choice involved. And we've talked about, we started with your physical healing and we've gone into trauma and emotional healing. And it's very interesting that these two are very interrelated. And when we solve one, it tends to solve another, which is also quite beautiful. You get definitely a twofer out of the deal. So excellent. So Kathy, is there anything else you want to make sure that we cover today before we close? Oh, this has just been wonderful. I love this conversation. And, you know, I do other podcasts. We've taken it in such a beautiful direction. I would just say to people, your listeners, you know, uh, one of the other tools is, is don't lose hope. Surround yourself by a tribe of people who support you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, I think a lot of us, especially women who, you know, are, you know, we, we take care of people. We're the nurturers, but also men. Um, something happens to us and we say, I got to fix this all by myself. I got to figure this out on my own. I should be able to do this. That's the other little strain that goes through our heads. Ask for help whether it's help from a therapist, whether it's help from your immediate family, whether it's a circle of friends. There was a time when I had to say to people, you know, yes, I would love it if you would bring us lunch and here's what we need, you know? And that was unusual for me because I was always the one helping others, right? So so Absolutely. surround yourself with, with a support network and get the resources and talk to as many people as you can about what you're going through in a in a, in a in a, in a positive way, because that's where a lot of the answers in terms of complementary integrative medicine came from for me. When people learned what I was going through, they were like, oh, wait, you've got to talk to so-and-so. They went through something like this and this is what helped them. And you just, it, you know, it's like, it's like a big thread and you just, or, or, or breadcrumbs, if you will, you know, you just keep following them one by one by one. And suddenly you start getting answers that begin Every, it's, I, I wrote this in the book. Everything is incremental. If you can change one little thing, you have less pain, you have less something else, 
Then you go on and you find something else. And guess what? There's a little less pain or a little more improvement in one area. And you string them together. And, you know, suddenly, like I am today, like things are really, really good. And you have to, you have to start down that path. That is the path of hope, pursuing all of the things that, that, that are available to you that might help you um, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you know, pursue it all and find answers. Each person is unique. Each person is answers are going to look a different way. Yeah. So yeah, I'd close with that. Mm, thank you. That is beautiful. What a lovely message of hope. Appreciate you. Thank you. This has just been a delight, Linda. Thank you. Oh, for me as well. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Maya Angelou. She said, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. For our listeners, if you're suffering, I invite you to open your minds to solutions that can help you not only survive, but thrive. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. Please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. And if you'd like to heal your life from the inside out, there is a free video series at HopeForHealingFoundation.org. Just click on the free stuff tab. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed, A Journey Through Depression, and You Got This, an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.